Hello everyone, welcome back to YT Codemaster. In this quick video, I'll show you how to add the add mob consent form in Unity using the latest UMP SDK. What is a consent form? A consent form is a pop-up that asks users for permission before showing them personalized ads. It's required for users in the EU, under GDPR and some US states like California, under CCPA. Why is it important? Without a consent form, your app might violate privacy laws. Google Ad Mob could limit your ad revenue or even block ads for your app. So integrating the consent form keeps you safe and compliant. In this video, I've already integrated the Google Ad Mob SDK. If you haven't done that yet, don't worry. I've made a full step-by-step -step video. Check the link in the description to watch it first. Let's get started. First, go to your Unity project and create a new C script. Name it Ads Consent Controller. This script will handle everything related to the AdMob consent form using the UMP SDK. Alright, let's break down the script called Ads Consent Controller. This is a static class, meaning we don't need to attach it to any game object in the scene. We can call it from anywhere in our code. We have a property called can request ads. It simply returns whether we are allowed to show ads or not based on the user's consent status. We call consent data function to handle everything requesting consent info and if needed showing the consent form. Inside this method, we first create consent request parameters which are needed to request updated consent info from the user. Then we call consent information.update which contacts Google servers to check if the user is from a GDPR or CCPA region. If there's an error during update, we immediately return the error message through the on complete callback. Now if everything is fine, we check can request ads. If true, it means we don't need to show the consent form, so we finish there. But if consent is required, we call load and show consent form if required. This shows the Google UMP consent form pop-up only when needed. If there's an error while showing the form, we return that error too. Otherwise, if everything is successful, we just return null, which means no error. Lastly, we have reset consent. This clears any stored consent data. This is useful only for testing, so you can see the form again during development. Now let's update our existing Ads Manager script to work with the consent system. In this project, the AdMob SDK is already integrated. We just need to make sure we only initialize ads after the user gives consent. First, at the top of the script, create a private static variable. This will prevent add mob from being initialized multiple times. Next, go to the start method. Comment out the existing line where we directly called mobileads.initialize. We don't want to call it immediately anymore. If we already have permission, initialize ads right away. Call initialize Google Ads consent line to always run the consent flow. Now let's write the function called initialize Google Ads consent. This function will ask for the user's consent and if permission is granted, it will call the actual ad initializer. Inside this method, we call ads consent controller dot consent data and pass a callback to handle the result. If there's an error, we log it using log error. Otherwise, if everything is fine, we print the updated consent status using debug.log. Finally, we check again. If and if true, we call initialize Google Ads. Now let's move our add mob SDK code into a new method called initialize Google Ads. In this method, we first check if is initialized already has a value. If yes, we simply return to avoid initializing twice. Then we call mobile ads dot initialize. And inside the callback, we check if the initialization was successful. If it was, we set is initialized to true 
and load all ad formats like banner ads, interstitials and rewarded ads. Now let's configure the settings in the Google AdMob website. First, go to the Google AdMob website and open the privacy and messaging section from the sidebar. There you'll see two options, Europe regulation and US state regulation. Click on Europe regulation create and tap on get started. Now you'll see the consent form editor. By default, the form is set to show do not consent and a close option. You can leave it as is. Then select the app you are currently adding the consent form. Paste your privacy policy URL in the field provided and click confirm. Next, go to the targeting options tab. Make sure countries subject to GDPR is selected. This ensures the form shows only in Europe. Finally, click on publish changes. Now let's set up the US state regulation. If you've already created for other apps, you'll see those listed. If this is your first time, click create just like before. Select your current app and follow the same steps you did for GDPR. Then click publish. After publishing both forms, go back to the privacy and messaging page. You should now see the status for both Europe and US regulations as active. That means everything is correctly set up and your consent form will show in the right regions. Let's test it now. But wait, if you are running the app on a device that's, that's not in Europe or California, the form might not show by default. So to make sure the form appears during testing, we'll use Google's debug settings. Inside the code where we create consent request parameters, update it like this. This tells Google to treat the current device as if it's in the EU, so the consent form will show every time, even during development. You should see the consent form pop-up appear right at the start. And once you accept or deny, the app will continue and AdMob ads will still work based on the selected preference. To test the consent form on a real Android device, you'll need your device's test ID. If you already have it, you can skip this step. Go to the package manager. In the top left corner, change the source from in project to unity registry. Now search for Android Logcat in the list. Select it and click install. Window analysis Android Logcat. This will open the Logcat window. Inside your ads manager script, add test device. Now in the start method, before initializing the ads, add test configuration. You can also get your device's ID using get device ID helper method. This will print your device ID in Logcat.
File Build Settings. Select Android as your platform and then click on Player Settings in the bottom left. In the Inspector window, scroll down to Publishing Settings and check the box for Custom ProGuard file. Now go to your Projects folder. Assets, Plugins, Android ProGuard User.pro. Open the file and add this line at the top. This rule tells ProGuard not to remove or rename any classes or methods inside the user messaging platform SDK, also called UMP. Save this file, click build and run in your actual device. After successfully run, search test device is in logcat. You can see test device ID copy this and paste it in script. You can comment this line, again run project. This time you can see consent form in your actual device. Also check your ads is working or not. If you want to check the US state regulation consent form for example to test CCPA compliance, set regulated US state and call reset consent function. Only call while testing. If you are uploading your game in production mode, please make sure to comment debug code. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and drop your questions in the comments below.